After last week's leak of the draft document that touches on Roe v. Wade, some abortion groups, Ruth sent us for one, announced their intent to target Catholic churches with protests on Mother's Day. Vandals have struck a church in Boulder, Colorado, while at least three churches in Texas were struck, one with pro-abortion graffiti. Another parish had its tabernacle stolen. Here with analysis is the president of the Catholic League, Dr. Bill Donahue, joined by counterterrorism expert and former FBI agent Todd Hulsey. Gentlemen, thank you both for being here. Bill, your thoughts on these attacks in the macro and why they're singling out Catholic institutions? I mean, do they think uh, the Supreme Court justices visit every parish every Sunday? No, I, listen, here about a month ago, I asked to see Cardinal Dolan, uh, and, I, and my, the purpose of the meeting was that I anticipated this. I didn't anticipate it until the end of June, because I thought that was when the, uh, when the actual uh, Roe v. Wade decision would be rendered. And assuming that we might win, I said we can expect uh, violence and vandalism, because these people are vicious. Uh, they, 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 they understand no boundaries whatsoever. Of course, I didn't anticipate the leak, and so it started even earlier. Look, the Catholic Church back in 1973 was the only institution opposed to Roe v. Wade. The evangelicals, the Southern Baptists, other Protestants got on board later in the 70s, and I'm very happy that they did. But they weren't with us in 1973. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, the Orthodox Jews may have been okay with it, but they're too small to matter. So it was basically just Catholics alone. So now we have Catholic justices, too. These people are being targeted because they're Catholics. This is really uh, is stunning. Not only do we have laws against this, which, of course, are not enforced, but this is rank anti-Catholic bigotry. And uh, it's, it, it's what started abortion back in the 60s with Lawrence Later and Dr. Bernard Nathanson. Nathanson admitted all of this long before he died, that the entire campaign for abortion was built on the, on the foundation. We have to sell it as, an, as, as a Catholic event. It's because of these Catholics and their power and their authoritarianism. And so if we attack the Catholic Church hierarchy in particular, we'll get what we want. The anti-Catholic element has never stopped, so that's what accounts for this draconian uh, uh, attempt to shut down Catholic, the Catholic voice today. I interviewed some of the people who were at the uh, Los Angeles Cathedral this weekend when these ladies came in in their red garb and their little bonnets. Um, they, they meant to evoke that Handmaiden's Tale show and book, the Margaret Atwood book, and the show on Hulu. The problem is the cosplay routine is a little off base. One of the ladies I spoke with thought they were dressed as Betsy Ross, and a man there thought they were Little Red Riding Hood. So the people don't know what the heck's going on when they walk in. Todd, I want to get your law enforcement perspective on this. These attacks may not be organized by a particular group in all cases, but, uh, you know, this Ruth Sentis group, they've called for action. But there is an organizing uh, mentality here. How should the federal government be addressing this vandalism before it turns into physical violence? Well, first of all, <clears throat> the uh, security of the Supreme Court justices and the Supreme Court building and grounds itself is, is under the purview of the marshal of the Supreme Court and not the FBI. Mm -hmm. And I'll get, to the, I'll get to the answer to the question in just a moment. The United States Marshal okay. Service was ordered to provide additional security for the Supreme Court and its justices. So the FBI is not really concerned with that. What the FBI is concerned with is organized attempts to 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 destroy uh, churches, to, to to attack buildings, to attack personages, and and the FBI does mm -hmm. that through the regional joint terrorism task forces around the country. Singular acts of vandalism. Will be, will be worked by the local law enforcement agency providing law enforcement services to that parish in this case. The Joint Terrorism Task right. Force in that area will, of course, be made aware of this, and it'll be kind of cataloged as an event that uh, to, to raise a little uh, awareness amongst the, uh, the people on the Joint Terrorism Task Force to, to be a little bit vigilant about. It's really, from the FBI mm -hmm. perspective anyway, it's going to be about finding an organization uh you just said that you know it's doesn't appear to be organized now but with social media disorganized groups can get mm -hmm. together in a singular effort and those are the things that the right. fbi will be interested in stopping mm -hmm. well you know there are bubble zones around these abortion clinics 
why not around houses of worship to begin with? Does this rise to the level of a hate crime in your estimation? I think well, these it little can. Acts of vandalism. Yes, they certainly can. It, it really depends on, I mean, you know, there's random acts of, of, of vandalism occur all over the place all the time. Just think of tagging the side of a building with, with some kind of graffiti. If, if, it, if it's, and there are plenty of copycats out there, especially seeing stuff on mm -hmm. social media, people going out to, to commit a copy cat type act it depends on the facts and circumstances of each individual event but it's certain you cannot rule out the possibility of, of of there being evidence specifically of a hate crime against the catholic church and, and that would be investigated really by the local law enforcement mm -hmm. bill your thoughts on this ruth sent us organization i mean that you, you know they cite Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg, in their handle, but Justice Ginsburg herself questioned the legal reasoning of Roe, despite her support for abortion rights. Uh, perhaps a rebranding of this group might be in order. Yeah, I mean that's right. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, she she led the ACLU Re Reproductive Freedom Project. Uh, she was definitely an abortion supporter. But she was an honest woman. She knew that this was a decision that was best made by the legislature and not by the courts. So she, she understood that Roe was on very shaky grounds uh, in, in the first place. And she certainly, in fairness to her, did not countenance violence. Look, the, one of the reasons why we have this is that we have the Senate Majority Leader. Remember what he said about Kavanaugh and about Gorsuch? You're going to pay for this. You're going to be sorry about your decisions. Mm. Uh, then we have Nancy Pelosi, who's encouraging this kind of protest going on, this, this, this kind of vile uh, uh, demonstrations that are taking place. And we have the president of the United States, a self-described devout Catholic who hasn't opened his mouth once about this. We would have gotten more sympathy and more compassion and more action from a non-Catholic president, I am convinced be it a, a, a Jewish person uh, or, or, for that matter, a Muslim or a Protestant, that what we're getting from this man. That's where the problem is. We have no leadership in Washington, uh, and both uh, Pelosi and, uh, and, and Biden identify themselves as Catholic. Mm. Now these uh, abortion rights protesters are even surrounding Nancy Pelosi's house. So, you know, uh, th th this, is, this is spiraling out of control. Todd, I want to get your take on what Jen Psaki had to say about demonstrations outside of the homes of these Supreme Court justices. Listen. So I know that there's an outrage right now, I guess, about uh, protests that have been peaceful to date, and we certainly continue to encourage that outside of judges' homes, and that's the president's position. Todd, the president's position is encouraging, I guess, according to her, peaceful protests at the homes of justices from a security standpoint. This seems very dangerous. I mean, these are private homes. And let's face it, with the media attention and the little cosplay happening in front of the houses, they're really soft doxing these justices and the locations of their homes. Your reaction? Well, my first reaction is that if the president's position is that these protests are okay, well, the president has sworn an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution and to enforce the laws of this country. It's against the law. There's a federal statute on the books that says you cannot protest outside of a judge's house in order to influence a judicial decision. That is a federal crime, and you can go to prison for that. And this administration certainly isn't interested, based on their own words, in enforcing, in enforcing that statute. Uh, as far as the physical mm -hmm. security goes, yes, it's soft doxing, absolutely. I mean, it's full-on doxing from what I've been reading in, right. in the mainstream media and whatnot. And again, the physical security is the purview of the United States Marshal Service working with the Marshal of the Supreme Court. But the organization, something that my former agency, the FBI, would be looking at. But, you know, at base bottom, Raymond, we're looking at a federal law that says you cannot protest outside of the House of, in this case, the Supreme Court justice in order to affect the outcome of a case. It's against the law. And this administration, with a president, right. like all presidents do, sworn to enforce the laws of the United States. There are words to that effect in the presidential oath. This president mm -hmm. and this administration hasn't done it.
Yeah, well, now you've got the governors of, of Virginia and Maryland begging the Justice Department to enforce those statutes you just mentioned, because they're, they, they can't do it. The localities won't even let them set up checkpoints or anything in the neighborhoods. So the, the feds have to get involved here. And you're right, it's a constitutional requirement. Uh, Bill, I want to get your take as a sociologist on Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen's comments in the Senate this week on the economic benefits of abortion. Listen to this. Give me your reaction. Well, I believe that eliminating the right of women to make decisions about when and whether to have children would have very damaging effects um, on the economy and would set women back decades. There are many research studies that have been done um, over the years looking at the economic mm -hmm. impacts of access or lack thereof to abortion, and it makes clear that denying women access to abortion increase their odds of living in poverty. Bill, your you thoughts know, I, on I, this. I, Are there studies to back up this yeah. assertion? <laughs> you know, I imagine you could find a study to back up anything anymore because so many of the people in the social sciences uh, have their own ideological predilections at work. But, you know, this is myopia beyond. Uh, it's, it's stunning that you talk about an issue which a matter of life and death and you look at it strictly on the matter of dollar and cents. And according to Janet Yellen's uh, analysis, I guess that black women are mostly the hurt, uh, hurt the most. It's interesting. Blacks are about 12, 13 percent of the population. They make up about between 33 and 36 percent of all the abortions. Uh, are they benefited? Are black women better? And are the black people in general better by having more of their kids aborted? And, and is this is this are we going to look for the stock market maybe to resonate as, as a result of this? Uh, this is the kind of tunnel vision that I didn't really expect from her, because when she was in the Obama administration, I actually thought she made some very good decisions. Uh, but maybe she's been hanging out with the people uh, with, with a different administration. And now she's gone off the rails like a lot of other people in this administration. Bill, you issued a press release on this new Pew study on abortion uh, that has some interesting findings. Uh, America's abortion quandary is the title. What, what, did, what did you find in their results? Well, as usual, their, their methodology is, is precise. Uh, I have no problem with that. I look at the data, and then I look at the narrative, and their summary, and with the conclusions they came to, and it doesn't really match. I mean, they, they, they don't mention Roe at all, except in a perfunctory way in the very beginning of it. But, but Roe v. Wade means that you can have an abortion through term. All right. They initially said 24 weeks, but then, of course, the doctor can claim a, a mental health exception, which means right through term. The American people, only 19 percent of the American people in the poll uh, said they're in favor of abortion for any reason. So 81 percent of, of the American people are opposed to what Roe allows. Then they ask people who are in favor of abortion rights, are you in favor of, of, of a woman having an abortion at any time? 58 percent, 6 out of 10, said, no, we're not. And then they explicitly asked about the 24 weeks. 43 percent of the American people say a woman should not be allowed to have an abortion at 24 weeks, and only 22 percent said yes. And then they asked about parental consent. Seven out of 10 Americans believe in parental consent. If your child is under the age of 18 and, the, and that woman wants to get an abortion, we need to know about it. The point is this. The American people want abortion to be limited, very limited, in terms of when you can have it and the reasons for it. Roe is, is, is unscripted. So the fact of the matter is, if the Democrats think that this is a winning hand for them, they don't seem to understand. The American people do not have the enthusiasm for abortion on demand, as we just saw the Democrats vote for this week. Uh, if they think this is going to rally their, their base, uh, there's very... Most people are very conflicted about abortion, and if anything, they are, are against what Roe allows. And the poll uh, shows that. Uh, if, if, if the Pew authors reread uh, their, their own data, maybe they come to a different conclusion. I want to get back to these uh, protests and the vandalism. Over the weekend in Madison, Wisconsin, a crisis pregnancy center fell victim to arson. Uh, Wisconsin Family Action was hit 
with a Molotov cocktail early Sunday morning, and a wall was spray-painted with graffiti. A group called Jane's Revenge is claiming responsibility. Todd, though no one was injured and property damage was negligible—I mean, negligible, it's burned—from uh, your experience, how much worse could these incidents become the closer we get to a decision from the court? And are these kinds of groups being tracked by federal authorities? That's a great question, Raymond. I think that we can see the civil unrest of 2020 in this country as a guide to what could happen going forward if this leaked decision turns out to be close to or the actual majority decision of the court. And, you know, in preparing to come on your program this evening, I was reading news reports about these acts of vandalism and the protests and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I noted something uh, about the report reporting that I was reading is that in talking about whether extremists may, may commit some type of act of violence, in the articles, the authors always turned it where it would be the anti-abortion activists who are most likely to commit some or anti-abortion extremists anyway, who would be most likely to commit acts of violence and domestic terrorism, which seems to be backwards to me. Because although if Roe's overturned, it doesn't outlaw abortion in the United States, it returns the issue to the various state legislatures. It would seem, mm -hmm. though, that if Roe is overturned, your, your, you know, your anti-abortion activists would be getting what they want. And, and it seems like the people who would not be getting what they want are the pro-abortion activists or extremists in this country. And mm -hmm. it could be a result of a left of center bias of the reporters, or it could be because that's what their sources in the United States government are saying to them. And it's and that's kind of what the sense I'm getting from reading multiple articles uh, yesterday. And I got to tell you, it's almost as though a baseball game is going on. And the United States government is looking at a football, telling us all to anticipate <laughs> an offsides penalty in the baseball game. Well, there is no offsides in mm -hmm. baseball. All right. So I wonder if the United States government is actually looking at the correct stretch uh, uh, threat streams, or if they're looking at the threat streams that may actually not be so threatening. I don't know, but I, mm. I, I kind of suspect that people are looking in the wrong places right now. Getting back to the uh, original mm. uh, part, uh, answer to your question is, yeah, we can see this get much, much worse when the actual Supreme Court opinion is, is released. Mm -hmm. Bill, uh, you're giving the commencement speech at the Ave Maria School of Law in Florida this weekend. You're receiving an honorary degree. What is your message going to be? Give us a little preview. I'm going to talk about the pursuit of truth. That's what the academy was founded for. It was. It, it does. It is conditioned on freedom of speech, but it, the freedom of speech is not the end. It's the pursuit of truth, and of course, that no longer exists in many Catholic colleges. Uh, not, 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 and never mind uh, the secular institutions. It's the pursuit of, of politics. And with the postmodernist idea that there's no such thing as truth, that's why you have the idea that a man could be a woman, he could be a giraffe, he could be a, he could be a chimpanzee, men can get pregnant. Uh, the madness is, is ubiquitous, and we don't have enough asylums to lock up most of these people. Many of them uh, belong, uh, they teach in higher education. That is not true at Ave Maria Law School. Thank God we have people like Tom Monahan, uh, who, who has founded an excellent school, as well as Ave Maria University. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very much honored uh, to get the uh, honorary degree, and I hope to fire up the students on Saturday. Gentlemen, we'll leave it there. You can follow Bill Donahue over at thecatholicleague.org. And Todd Halsey, thank you for your time and perspective. You're welcome. Thank you.